Okay, Letty. Okay. You can go. Yeah, we're we're live and I think Letty may let our guests um, enter the room now. Hello everyone, welcome to Friday. I'm glad you could join us. Um, in the studio today, we have Constantine's, uh, I was, yeah, I don't know. Durko, okay. <laughs> um, Constantine is a brand ambassador. Um, right now he's in St. Petersburg, Russia. He's a fabulous artist. I think you'll really enjoy um, hearing what he has to say and, and looking at his demonstration. I think the one thing that makes this very important when you're in Zoom is your ability to join the conversation. Um, Constantine um, does invite. He's a very, very, very fantastic host. He has a great, great knowledge base, can answer just about any question. Um, he's extremely fast. Uh, and I think you'll really, really enjoy him. There is a, an issue on the um, Facebook side. Uh, there's internet um, issues, so it's very hard to stream on the Facebook side. If you can log into the Zoom side, you don't necessarily have to show um, your your video. You can turn the video portion off, but you'll let, you'll be able to be live with us and actually see what Constantine is doing. Um, so sorry about that, but we live in the day of technology, and sometimes it just doesn't work. So with that, I, I want to introduce Constantine. Constantine, hello and welcome. Hello, hello, welcome everybody. Constantine, can you tell the group about yourself? Well, I'm an artist with uh, 30 years experience of painting. Uh, I have been always painting with watercolor, uh, even though I uh, painted with oil and pasta and everything. I just gave up everything because watercolor is something that gives me all possibilities uh, to express myself because it's a medium which uh, you can do anything, this medium. So today uh, we're going to uh to paint very uh easy very light objects uh without mm, even some of them without pencil drawings so that is uh, that will give you more concentration and we will try of course uh, uh some of paints uh, daniel smith paints and some colors that could be useful for uh, painting cats. I will also, I will show you my palette. Uh, and uh, I hope it will be all helpful and inspiring. So let's, let's start. Let me Please. just uh, make a brief note uh, to say, to remind people that you can paint along if you can manage to yes. follow Constantine. He's very fast, but you're <laughs> very welcome to paint along and then uh, show your painting once yeah. finished. Thank everyone you. is welcome to catch up. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So you also describe your brushes that you use. I will use. I will. I, I will sure. I will sure. Thank you. Show my brushes and everything that is that I'm going to use today. So. Uh, just a few brushes I have here. Uh, I didn't decide yet uh, which I am going to use because I always do it spontaneously. I have some tools and I just pick them um, very spontaneously. So you see, I have uh, both uh, flat brushes, uh, those are goat's hair, and also uh, this also. Mm, I consider it's flat, uh, even though it's pointed, it's cat tongue, uh, half squirrel, half synthetic squirrel imitation. Then also some round brushes, some more brushes uh, in the squirrel imitation. Uh, this one is synthetic, but it's very good hair. Um, mm, it, it takes a lot of water and it's also quite springy, super, super brush. Uh, most of the brushes I'm using, mm, are um, by Rublev. It's a Russian brand. I, I'm not sure if it's available uh, in many places in the world, but uh, you can find probably some 
analogs uh, uh, by different uh, manufacturers. For instance, I would recommend a scoder, of course. Uh, I even have some escorter brushes, but I didn't put them here today. Uh, so also some other materials. It's a pen drawing gum. Uh, it's masking fluid in a, in a pen. Uh, very handy to make some whiskers and the uh, kind of uh, very tiny details. Uh, for some texture I'm using uh, today also, I, I think I will use it. It's a uh, wax crayon, just a very simple children wax crayon, very cheap and simple. Uh, very humble <laughs> tool, I think. Uh, then I also, uh, I use a graphite a pencil, uh, both uh, with a wooden shirt and without. And eraser, of course. And sometimes I use also plastic cards. I'm not sure if I can use it today for this uh, subject. Also very handy to have this one, but not today. You see, you can just put it under your hand like this. Uh, if, if everything is wet around, you just can do it this way. Just a stick, like wooden stick. Mm, about the paints, here is my uh, palette. I can make it closer, I think. Yeah. Ah, it's also just a mirror. Uh, mirror, okay. Anyway. Okay. So, we can... so here. Uh, no, Constantine, it's not a mirror. You, we can see perfectly well. Yeah? Thank yeah. you. Yes. When oh. you get the close up, it's fantastic. Okay. All right. Because I can see it like uh, <laughs> the other way. I know because right. when you watch yourself, it's a mirror, but we can see. Uh -huh. it. Okay. All right. Okay. So I have Hansa yellow light, which I'm going to use for some different yellow because this one is not uh, light resistant. Then uh, pyrrol orange, uh, pyrrol scarlet, uh, kinecridon rose, rose of ultramarine, moon glow, French ultramarine, verdita blue, uh, manganese blue hue, uh, indigo, paints gray, which is now neutral tint, uh, ultramarine turquoise, uh, sedona, genuine burnt amber, and tiger's eye genuine. So from all those uh, we're going to use today only uh, neutral tint, uh, yellow ochre, raw sienna, maybe sedona genuine, burnt amber, and tiger's eye genuine. Uh, and also, I have a special palette here. This is a palette of some uh, granulating colors. So uh, sometimes I am changing, changing them. So here I have uh, sepia uh, and bloodstone and hematite and shadow violet and also some grays and uh, ceruleum. So I mix them all through and they will give some kind of brownish uh, muddy color, which granulates perfectly well. For, for the cat is just very, very good. So you see, here is shadow violet. You can use also, instead of burnt uh, amber, you can use burnt tiger's eye genuine because of, uh, instead of amber, I'm using uh, tiger's eye genuine. And uh, besides that, I would recommend Visteria because when you paint a cat's nose, it's very nice to mix Visteria and Sedona. That makes a very nice color for, for the cat's nose. Uh, so that's about the, that's about the paints. So maybe I can also introduce my subject. I'm going to make two very simple sketches without pencil drawing and 
one uh, sketch may be more detailed. Let's try. Let's go for it. This one is supposed to be very. Uh, anyway, if somebody wants to uh, to get um, maybe more thoroughly to know what and I'm doing and how, uh, it's better to take my online courses because there I'm explaining. Uh, in details, how uh, I, I'm doing and what, uh, what I'm mixing and how I'm using certain uh, certain colors and also the wetness of paper and many other things, which I just cannot focus on today because we have very short time, very short session. So I'm going to to wet my colors. I will do it just with a brush. I will wet all of them. And here also. Uh, this one, uh, this, uh, oh, you cannot see now. Oh, yes, it's there. Fine. Fine. I... Okay, maybe like this you can see better all, all the palettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So now also I have to get a palette a paper palette because sometimes you just uh, need to to get uh, a proper amount of, of paint on your brush and you can leave some water somewhere else. So for that, I can use a napkin and paper towel and also paper palette. So let me wet a little bit my sheet of paper. Uh, this is going to be a Sanders Waterford And I will need uh, one brush, uh, which is more stiff, more like springy, which is synthetic. And also one brush soft and uh, well absorbing. Sorry, Constantine, um, so under water for 300 grams? Yeah, okay. uh, cold Thank pressed. You. Thank you. Cold, cold pressed. So. I will take a little bit of uh, ochre and sienna. I always put them together. And I think I will just find a nice place for, for the back of the cat. Like this. I st I'm starting with the big mass. Then I will take, then I will take actually this mixture of those paints, bloodstone, hematite, and, and sepia, and a little bit of bluish cerulean. That's quite complicated mixture. And I'm putting again here, so, that that is that is the the body of the cat and here so something and now i have to find the ears the plates for the ears And the ears are quite hard. OK. 
Okay. And the, his uh, head is turned up. So I'm just going there. Leaving that part for the highlight. And then the then there would be the nose. The cat is watching upward. Maybe the cat can see some fly there or something. And you see, I am using both uh, wet and dry uh, surfaces. And I think there could be a little bit softer just with the wet brush i can soften a little bit the border and i think now i can take more pigment on my brush to add the darker areas and also the pattern of the cat's head And here also maybe some darker. And of course the ears are much darker. So I'm making a darker mixture. To make a, an accent here. So now I'm using a wet area. And also the back is still wet, so I can also use it there. Some texture. And now it's already granulating quite nicely, but I can uh, enhance this granulation by a little bit uh, spraying over it. And also I prepare the tail, which is going to be softer. Constantine, when you have a moment, can you zoom in and let us see the, the granulation on the cat? Yeah, just a moment. I have to do a little bit of, um, well, I can do it now. Just maybe I could soften a little bit somewhere. So thank you. All right. Now I can do the uh, shadow, which is also can be quite soft. But if I do it by spraying, I might uh, uh, damage this part. But I can try. I can just do it this way.
So, because the shadow should be softer. And you see, I'm working with the same big brush. And now I can also take more cerulean. The shadow can be cooler. A little bit. So, so there is a shadow. This. That's good. And also I can give a hint of where is the, the border of the floor and the wall. And there could be also a shadow. Okay. Like this. Uh, it's, I feel like uh, adding a little bit more of darker accents there. So I will take um, more hard, a harder brush. Where is it? Here. And I will take more pigment. So uh, still on wet, I'm adding more uh, darker accents there. this and also there some accent so now i've just probably can soften here some transitions and that will be the thing and now i can just put a little spot there which is the think he is hunting for. Something there. The um, po point of blazer on spider, <laughs> little spider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Okay. And you see, now it's already all you can see all the granulation there, quite, quite nice. I can put it this way. All right, you see, uh, we save so much time uh, without pencil drawing. Now I can do another one. By the way, Maybe I can show some of the works which you can uh, see the pro in progress on my online courses. And online courses I will just put now to my uh, to the chat if you are there. Uh, and also my Instagram there. So you you can just click and see it in and maybe more thoroughly. So uh, some of these works you can see in progress there on my courses. So also it's a lot about granulation and about uh, mixing uh, colors and also about how to make certain textures and accents on wet because this one is painted on wet, but some of the uh, features are quite uh, sharp. So I'm showing there how to do it. It takes a little bit 
longer so i cannot oh. show it today so this also on wet and all these textures and granulations it's something what we can learn to paint um, this one i painted on online course for a uh, one canadian uh, school you can also uh, check the first uh, link there uh, so there is a recording of that session which is available so uh, let's continue this time i'm going to use a different paper it's uh, this one is handmade paper and we can take this this one all right so same thing first i'm just a little bit making the paper moist with with my spray and then then uh, the bigger mass of cat's body some sienna some sienna cat's body I think granulation will be even better on this paper. And here would be the cat's head, Trichy. So let me take some of this granulating mass. Nice paint. And I have to find also the head, this line of the head. And also the place for the for another ear. It's a highlight, so I have to leave it white. No masking. So now when I have the ear, I'm quite free to do what I want behind. And here's also the forehead. And there is a nose, somewhere here is a nose. And I have to, to know where's the eyes. The eyes will be here. And around the eyes will be some lighter area. Some cheek. And that cheek. Like this. <clears throat> I can also put the darker for the eye. Also, maybe there a little bit on the top. And there. Something like this. So it's already like emerging. And now the inside the ear and, and the little shadow there also inside the ear. 
So that's the head. And now I can go further here just to find the body and leaving a little bit of white space. So the head, the head is bigger. It has some white part here. All right, here's the chest and that paw is here and that is the, it's getting dry and I want to do it a little bit wet, more wet now. All right, so like this. This front paw, there is another paw. You see, it's granulating there. I can show. But I will add more paints now. And there. That pour behind. Like this. And that that one is a little bit darker. So that one behind And here I can do it softer, just some softing and a tail. You see, it's uh, with the lighter one, I just wetting it. And then into this wet, I am adding, I'm adding thicker paint. And also can add the, the texture. Maybe here could be even darker. There behind the, the uh, muzzle, we can see a darker part. And more texture. On wet, of course. And that leg also is going to be darker. See all this softness uh, because it's on wet. And it, it works perfectly well on the handmade paper. 
that is the end of the tail is darker. And then some texture. Constantine, how would you shade if you were doing a black cat? What? How would you shade if you were doing a black cat? White. Uh, the white cat, I will, uh, I will do uh, by the darker background. So I will just make the, uh, how to say, the relationship, tonal relationships mainly, uh, uh, trying to find the silhouette uh, like uh, um, a negative shape of that cat. Thank you. And how about black cats? Again, silhouette, but not <laughs> not a negative shape. <coughs> like this. So there's. there's a like this. So it could be also some uh, whiskers and even scratch. You can scratch it with your nail. So that's another one. You make that look so easy. I think the uh, the um, magic of watercolor is when you uh, you can sh show no uh, efforts. When your watercolor is effortless, then there is magic. If uh, if uh, you can see the struggle, then no magic. <laughs> Well said. <laughs> well said. <laughs> so I'm just cheating you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if we still have time to make this one uh, because I want it, but I can do it also without a pencil, then we can make it. You have 20 minutes. 20 minutes. I think we can do. As you like. Impossible for me. <laughs> Your cats are amazing, Konstantin. We love them. Yeah. And as I said, there is a, a possibility to, to learn more about how I do them. If you see my online courses uh, where I'm doing it, not within 10 minutes, but within one hour each each of them. Uh, I was trying to do it also effortlessly, but, <laughs> but anyway, there are much more uh, things I am focusing on in, in those uh, lessons. So probably if you have many questions now, uh, you can get the answers to th those questions. Uh, especially about mixing colors and about edges and about textures and about structure also of the cat, how to build it uh, up and everything uh, in those uh, lessons. Could you, because anyway, us, could you show us the, um, the nose technique with Sidona and uh, with Tiria? Nose technique, okay. So now I'm also sharing uh, again the, uh, the link to those courses and to my Instagram page. Uh, okay, so nose, hmm, you want nose. The, the mix of Wisteria with Sedona. Okay, okay, okay. I can do just the face, just the face of the cat. Uh, we don't see it here, but I think I can show. Thank you. <laughs> like uh, maybe just close up the, the the nose and the head and also an ear and there's some nice 
textures inside and the back side of the ear and the head, the back side of the head, then the shoulder and everything. And here would be the the eye, closed eye, because it's slipping. But here we can get a nose. So right. And there will be also some texture. But the nose, this is what you want. <laughs> Just a moment. But I want also the paw. That is that four which is from behind, and that is the one which goes there. And there would be some other things which you kind of. Okay. Um, the the uh, mixture of Sedona, Sedona, and Visteria. If you mix them, that will be a perfect color for the nose. And not only nose, but also inside the ear. So I will make it soft again. We'll make it a little bit wet. To make it soft, you have to make it wet. And then I will get a little bit of sienna for for this part. So quite soft. Here could be brighter Sienna. And nose also could be Sienna and some white around the eye. And there is around the, just patience. I will show you the nose. Okay, now when it is wet, we can add darker pattern also on wet. Or maybe mix a little bit with more sienna. Just getting a little bit darker brown. So here with this pattern. Like this, and there, I think I can add even a little bit of neutral tint in that part. And here I can use that stick because it's all wet and I want my hand to be steady. Like this. Now it's time for 
the nose. Let me take a little bit of Sedona and a little bit of Wisteria. And that will be the nose. Perfect uh, nose. Maybe I can do it even a little bit brighter. And also an accent. Yeah. And there could be a little bit. Now the ear, which is also, which also requires the same mixture. Sedona and Visteria. Even behind, I can add a little bit of reddish. Okay. So that's the way. we can do the shadow there so the ear will appear. I'll take just this cerulean and maybe shadow violet. Now that part will be a little bit lighter. And that part is just softer. So. Okay, so just, and we used also that one a little bit like uh, adopted, uh, just with the background. All right. So we got three demos. Did you catch up? Let, let's see closer. Awesome, Constanti, awesome. Very nice brush strokes. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. It's also, uh, the, it's very good for those um, paints for Daniel Smith paints uh, to use handmade paper because uh, it granulates perfectly on handmade paper. A completely different uh, effect. Absolutely. Constantine, could you show the, your card again, please? 
my, my card. card. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, you I can make a screenshot, maybe. Yeah, I use not only those from my cards, but also some some additional ones. Constantine, instead of handmade paper, if you don't have it, is rough paper better, fine? Yeah. Mm, actually, sometimes uh, some of uh, granulating uh, Primatech colors are making very good uh, texture, even on a very smooth paper. Like if you're right. using uh, very smooth paper, it just really makes uh, the, the trick is that you can use uh, this granulating colors uh, in one layer you cannot interfere if you if it you applied it and it starts uh, spreading you cannot uh, interfere there anymore you cannot really disturb the process so that's why i would use uh, all the uh, Primatech granulating colors and generally granulating colors for uh, more like for sketching and for some kind of quick washes. If you even if you're in a big painting, you are using some areas which you know exactly that you are not touching again. You can uh, do it in one wash, and and then you can get all the effects of granulating colors. But you uh, it it's not good for uh, doing uh, long studies because if you interfere in this process of uh, when it's getting granulating, granulated, then you just destruct the whole thing and it will be just muddy. So you have to plan well before uh, that you are using it in that areas uh, uh, without um, like touching it again. Let it just spread. Okay. Good advice. So either you can put it on wet or you can also work with the edges of those areas where you apply these granulating colors. But when it starts spreading, you just let it do it. Don't disturb that one because uh, the water knows better how to, to do with this granulation. We cannot do mm -hmm. it as good as water. Okay. So I am also talking about this in my courses. And I, uh, if somebody joins later, I will uh, put here the links. Just copy the links or just go directly to the online courses and my Instagram page. That's excellent. So I just let everybody know that you're going to do that and to come to your site to learn more about you and uh, join you on Instagram. Maybe if you have questions, I can, uh, I can turn my face to you, yeah? <laughs> can you watch the camera, please? Just a moment, changing cameras. So does anybody have any questions for Constantine? Carrie, Georgia, Lorena, anyone? But I would like to know, for a um, white cat, uh, how color do you use? Uh, uh, I think you can save uh, you can save white uh, white paper. Like for instance, here it's not completely white, but it has some white areas. It is just paper. I didn't mm -hmm. touch it at all. I was working with the edges. Uh, making some softer transitions, uh, so maybe more water, and also with the hard edges, uh, um, uh, contrast with the darker background. So mainly you can show the white card as a negative shape uh, by adding darker background and the contrast between this white cat and the background. 
The background uh, in this case is warm. And uh, it cat... doesn't matter. This is about the tonal value uh, more than okay. about the temperature. Okay, okay, thank you. I have several black cats and then black and white or black and orange cats. And I'm wanting to know, are you using black primarily? No. Or are you using a mixture of colors to get that rich um, yeah. tonality yeah. With, their, with their fur? Thank you. In, in my course in Artefacto, I have even one lesson about a black cat. And I'm mixing the uh, quite a few colors, including uh, including uh, moon glow and also some other colors. Just really, it's it's very uh, rich mix, but it's not it's not black. Uh, Thank you. Even even though uh, in Daniel Smith you have quite uh, uh, interesting uh, blacks and grays, I I do it even more rich. <laughs> I put even more colors there. So. Uh, they get their highlights. Yeah, but at the same time, you can work. This is one thing you can uh, paint black with like 10 colors uh, mixed together, but you can also paint with one color uh, <clears throat> uh, painting. And if you are uh, doing proper uh, tonal relationships, it might give you um, an effect of color. So uh, uh, just doing more tonal values uh, makes uh, some effect that your eye and your mind might. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, um, maybe I'm talking too loud. Just no, you're perfect. kind of effect. Uh, but this is only one color. It's just neutral tint. Okay, that's a new idea. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you coming on to Daniel Smith. I am with Daniel Smith with, uh, from, uh, since uh, 2013. And Sue asks, uh, what is it about the brand that attracts, uh, attracts you most? Uh, what brand? Which about, brand? About Daniel Smith. About Daniel Smith. <clears throat> oh, oh, uh, well, First of all, uh, Daniel Smith um, <laughs> is a club. Uh, Daniel Smith has a really, uh, it's a, a perfect relationship with the artists. Uh, they appreciate the artists and their customers. Uh, a very special attitude. Uh, I think I, I never met anything like this before. And of course, the quality of the paints and the big variety uh, you know, my first experience when I got the, all these generous uh, testing materials, uh, first of all, I was completely lost. And when I tr start trying, then I just realized that I cannot paint as before. Uh, and I don't know how to paint in new uh, in the new reality with all this, uh, how to say, with, with all this uh, precious uh, variety. So it took me a couple of months to get used to this <laughs> and to find my, and maybe it took me half a year to find my signature palette colors. Uh, but since then, I'm very happy. It, uh, it uh, gives me everything what I want. And uh, sometimes I add just maybe more colors to my palette because uh, I just cannot do with the same things. I always have to switch something new. Uh, and uh, from time to time I open for myself, I discover new uh, products or they may be not new, but they might be new for myself. And it's never boring. It's never dull, uh, always something uh, that uh, gives me more inspiration. Thank you so much. Constantine, how, how many cats do you have? <laughs> None. Are these your cats or just no, cats my, in your mind? Uh, we, we have one cat which, uh, li uh, which uh, lives not with us. 
uh, when I got a grandson, uh, we sent um, our cats to our relatives, and now we just can see uh, his life uh, through Instagram and uh, through maybe some posts and letters from our relatives. And I am suffering. I, I, I cannot do with that cats. You know, I, I, I rush to cats on the street when, uh, as crazy, just trying to, to touch it and to pet it. Whenever they give me this chance, I'm happy. My day is, uh, say, they made my day then. <laughs> Constantly, you give my cats. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try, try. Uh, <laughs> invite me to pet your cats. Yeah, <laughs> I will be happy. I can't believe you have grandsons or grandchildren. You look so young. I have only one. So oh, far. okay. <laughs> so, Constantine, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Constantine, thank you for being with us today. And thank you. Uh, you're Thank you for giving this opportunity because I uh, really I'm happy to share my admire admiration of these paints uh, and it's really great. Thank you. You're absolutely wonderful. Seeing how fast you are and you know watching the, the work that you've already done. We showed this your prior cats. They're beautiful. I mean, and lots of messages here. I'm not very able to see them, but people love the images of your cats and and how how quickly you can draw. And Thank you. It's just a fantastic. Thank you. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely agree. Thank you so much. <laughs> really inspired me. So thank, thank you everybody you. for joining. Uh, please go to Constantine's site. Um, he's put it on several times. IG at um, Sturkop Cope Art, uh, but it's on it's on the uh, Zoom. He's, he's left it several times. Um, please learn more about Constantine. It's absolutely wonderful. Giovanni, thank you. Lorena, thank you. Catherine, Georgia, thank you everybody for joining and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Fabulous.